There's been a lot of talk recently about Article 5, about changing the Constitution of the United States in a way never used before. In this video, I want to briefly explain how this works according to the Constitution and some of the arguments on both sides. Article 5 is shorthand, really, for just one part of the article of the Constitution that explains how to change the Constitution. Well, really, it explains the right way to change the Constitution. There are two ways to propose amendments and two ways to ratify them. Amendments may be proposed by Congress with the support of two-thirds of both the Senate and the House, or amendments may be proposed by a convention called by Congress when at least two-thirds of the states, through their state legislatures, ask Congress to do just that. There are two ways to ratify any amendments that do get proposed. Congress gets to choose which method, either state legislatures or conventions, called in each state. In either case, three-fourths of the states must agree. If they do, the Constitution is amended. Today, the only part of the Constitution that cannot be changed this way is states' equal representation in the United States Senate. According to Article 5, that can only be changed with the unanimous consent of every single state. Back to the topic at hand, when most people talk about Article 5, they are really referring to efforts to convince state legislatures to ask Congress to call a convention to propose constitutional amendments. There have been a lot of attempts to do this throughout American history, but never have enough states participated in the same effort in order to actually have a national convention to propose amendments. It has never happened. Frankly, that's one of the arguments against it. There's so much uncertainty about how Congress and the courts, not to mention various interest groups and the media, might try to use or abuse the process. Some people think it's just not worth the effort or even that it's gravely dangerous. On the other hand, advocates for a convention hope to revive public interest in the Constitution and to try to get a convention to propose amendments that they believe would get our country back on track. On the political left, an effort called Move to Amend wants to fundamentally change the First Amendment to give government almost unlimited powers to regulate political activities. On the political right, the Balanced Budget Amendment Task Force has a narrow proposal for a convention to consider an amendment to limit federal spending. The Compact for America would limit the convention process even more, trying to prevent abuses of that process by getting states to agree ahead of time on how a convention will work. One of the newest efforts is called the Convention of States. That group wants a broader convention that could consider many kinds of proposed amendments that might change the relationship between the states and the federal government. All these groups argue that only fundamental constitutional change can achieve their goals and fix our country. On the other side, skeptics point out that changing the text of the Constitution might not be the solution if the problem is judges and politicians ignoring the text of the Constitution. It is uncertain whether holding a convention would convince Americans to turn back to the Constitution and constitutionally limited government or whether it might simply send a message that the Constitution isn't really that important if all sides on the political debate think it needs a rewrite. One thing is for sure. Debates over constitutional change offer an opportunity to reconsider what the Constitution is all about, why it matters. Until the progressive era in the early 20th century, the Constitution was the touchstone of American politics. People disagreed about plenty, uh, but, but nearly everyone agreed that it mattered, that it provided the fundamental rules for the federal government and our Union of States. Over the course of the 20th century, that devotion waned. The American founders had believed that justice and human nature and human rights don't change over time. This meant a constitution based on these ideas was worthy of obedience over time and, if it really worked well, perhaps even worthy of reverence. A little more than a century ago, progressives like Woodrow Wilson challenged all these ideas. They saw the Constitution as an impediment to their use of government to control society through policies like eugenics, income taxes, and the welfare state. 
By empowering a new administrative state and by ignoring constitutional limits on government power, they promise to transcend the old ideas about justice and human nature and to use government to force a kind of fundamental progress, hence progressive, where government would have much more power but would give us stuff, even giving us new rights. Perhaps as we consider changing the Constitution, we can reconsider these ideas and weigh the principles of the American founders against the promises of the American progressives and think even more deeply about whether the time has come to change course back to the underlying principles that made our Constitution work in the first place.